Praise the Lord. Good to see you once again after a break of about five to six months. Uh, the last time I was here, well, I think it was uh, last year, end of last year. And it's good to be back here again in Suramban. Of course, I've, in the last six months, I've been driving quite a few times past Suramban. And uh, the last time was uh, on my way to Malacca for the uh, pastor's retreat, the AG Assemblies of God Pastors Retreat in Malacca. So we came by again to Suramban. Suramban is always a nice place to stop because there's a very nice shop selling siu pao. You know? The famous siu pao. Okay, let's, uh, we, we are here this morning to celebrate a very auspicious event, very important event. It's Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday starts the ball rolling for the plan of salvation, the plan that God had right from the time of Genesis, right through the Old Testament with all the prophecies. And that plan started in the New Testament with Jesus. And that plan was fulfilled on Palm Sunday, going down right up to Resurrection Day. So let, let us stand and uh, maybe we want to put up the worst, we want to read that part of Palm Sunday that was recorded in the Bible, shall we? Let's stand and read together from the book of Luke, chapter 19, reading from verse 28 to verse 38. Let's read this together. One through three. When he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, when he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mountain called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite you, where as you enter, you will find a coat tied, on which no one has ever sat. Lose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, Why are you losing it? Thus you shall say to him, Because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were losing the colt, the owners of it said to them, Why are you losing the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on the colt, and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then, as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, this morning, as we stand, O Lord, reading the precious word, O Lord, that this is history, O Lord, that has made its mark, O Lord, throughout the ages, Father. History that is true because it is your word, O Lord. History that has come to pass because you prophesied about it many years before it came, O Lord. Father, this morning we stand as a testimony to this, O Lord, that Jesus Christ is the King. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Jesus Christ is the Savior. Grant us, O Lord, a heart to be open this morning, a heart, O Lord, that will be filled with fertile soil, O Lord, that the seed of truth that will be deposited in each one of us will bring forth much good fruit, O Lord, and a multiplication of 30, 60, and 100-fold, O Lord. Let hear us, O Lord, hear your word, O Lord, and let faith arise this morning. Let our lives be transformed, O Lord. Let our lives be impacted, O Lord, because, O Lord, of Palm Sunday, O Lord. Because you came, O Lord. You came, Father, to redeem us. We thank you, Jesus. We ask now, Lord, as you anoint my lips, O Lord, that the oracles that will proceed out will be a blessing, O Lord, to all the hearers, O Lord, and that, Lord, they will be transformed. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. Yes, give the Lord a lovely clap offering. Hallelujah. Jesus deserves all the glory. Uh, I hope you don't mind if I stand down here. Is that okay? I'm sure you can see me. Huh? 
I don't need to be up there. It's better to be down here. Before I begin, there's one little thing I'd like to uh, uh, let you know. If you have not noticed, that you have a gentleman playing the saxophone. Have you noticed that? Now, I don't know whether he's a member of your church or he's a visitor. Uh, I want to tell you this story. A month ago, I was conducting a wake service in PJ. And this same gentleman was at the wake service and he was playing the saxophone. I didn't know him. He just came because the, the family or, or of the deceased uh, knew, knew him and invited him. But as I was uh, leading in that uh, wake service, he played Amazing Grace. In all my years, 38 years of ministry, conducting wake services and funerals and uh, uh, preaching, I have never heard someone play saxophone, the song Amazing Grace. And it was Amazing Grace. That was a month ago. I congratulated the brother and uh, I spoke and admired how he was uh, such an anointed uh, man that God had used to play that instrument. Two weeks later, I was in a church in Kota Kamuning, preaching in another church, and he was there again. Now, I didn't tell him, and he, he, I don't think he asked me where I was going to preach. And he was there, and he was playing that saxophone again. Now, two weeks later, now in Suramban, he's here again. <laughs> Did you invite him, Pastor Kwan? Oh, really? Uh, praise the Lord. Uh. And I was shocked to see him here. And I was sitting down just now, reflecting, and I said, God, are you trying to tell me something? This cannot be a coincidence, three times. And now we are in Serampana, not in Pataling Jaya. And the brother is still here, praise the Lord. Either God is speaking to you or God is speaking to me, I don't know. He must be speaking to both of us. How we all end up in the same place every Sunday. Now next Sunday I'll be in another church. Huh? I'm not going to tell you which church. But if I see you there, then I know God is speaking. Amen. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Praise God that Jesus Christ is in the house. Very lukewarm response. Hello, I said, Jesus Christ is in the house. Holy Spirit is in the house. He said, where? Uh? Pastor, where? Where? Here, la, here, in your heart. In your heart. Faith. You must have the faith to believe. Because the last time I said, you must have faith to believe. Whatever God says in the Bible, because whatever He says is true and will come to pass. Only just now when I came this morning, this sister was sharing. The last time I came, I prayed, I preached, I did not pray for, I preached that faith comes through the hearing of the Word of God. And she believed and her faith has made her well. Amen. amen. Her faith. Hello? Do I hear an Amen. It's your faith, not my faith. Your faith that will make you well. Basing on the promise of the Word of God. I know Eddie Young has been here. And I've been here many times. We are just instruments that God is using. So don't worry, because if Eddie Young is not here, the Word of God is still here. Jesus is still here. Jesus and the Holy Spirit is in you. Depend on the Word of God. And your faith will make you well. Amen. You don't sound too convinced. Huh? Don't worry, after we are through today, you will know what I'm trying to say. Now, Jesus came on a Palm Sunday. Now, Palm Sunday theologically is a very important event. Because theologically is recorded in the four Gospels. All four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 
In Matthew, it's recorded in chapter 21. In Mark, it was recorded in chapter 11. In Luke, we just read, it's recorded in chapter 19. And in John, it's recorded in chapter 12. All four Gospels recorded the event. It is a very important event. It is about the event that God said, now I have fulfilled what I have promised through the prophet Zechariah in chapter 9, verse 9 in the Old Testament. God has fulfilled it. What He has said has come to pass. And He said it accurately and He predicted, He, he prophesied it accurately through the prophet in Zechariah and exactly what was prophesied was what happened in Luke chapter 19. So, Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. All that was prophesied, all that was written, all that was done and said in the Old Testament pointed to this day, Palm Sunday. And this day has been made by God to come to pass. So I want to tell you, church, please, please, Hold on to the promises that God has given you. Hold on to the healing promises. Hold on to the deliverance promises. Hold on to the financial promises. Hold on to all the good things that God has promised you because it will come to pass. Thank you, Jesus, for keeping that promise. So all the four Gospels recorded this. And this is the beautiful part of it. Because this is the story of God coming to fulfill all that was said in the Old Testament. So that today, we are not saved by law, but we are saved by grace. Law could not save us. Law could only guide us. Law could only remind us but law could not save us. Law could not forgive us of our sins. Jesus had to come to fulfill what the law could not do because it had to be done by grace. And that grace started a few days after Palm Sunday at the cross of Calvary on Good Friday. And I will not go into Good Friday and I will not go into the Resurrection Day because then you don't need to come next week already. <laughs> but what I'm saying today is this. The story of Palm Sunday is very unique. It is a story about a saviour riding on a donkey. Now all of you know this story. All of you have read this story. We have just seen this story unfold. What I want to zero in this morning is not just on Jesus. Everybody knows Jesus. I want to zero in on the donkey. Is that okay? I want you to know why God used a donkey. I want you to know how God used a donkey. And I want you to know what is the reason God used a donkey. And I want you to know who is the donkey. Oh, now it's getting interesting, huh? Now, you understand, God uses animals, you know. Because why sometimes we come to church, uh, we are so quiet, we don't praise God. God says, uh, if one day you don't praise me, uh, the walls will praise me, the trees will praise me, the animals will praise me. So you all better learn how to praise God. Amen, and not keep quiet. God uses animals as metaphors. What is a metaphor? A metaphor is an imaginative way of describing something by referring to something else that is similar in nature. That means God is using an example, a symbol to describe something using an animal and an object to show and tell a story. In other words, to subtly tell you I can do this for animals and objects. I can do this for you, His creation. Amen. Now, some of these uh, uh, metaphors that God uses, I can give you examples in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Remember that? Those that wait on the Lord, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. 
God uses eagles. Eagles is a symbol of strength. It's a symbol of swiftness. So those who wait on the Lord, they will be like eagles. They will get new strength. They will walk and not faint. They will run and not be tired. That is the symbol. That's a metaphor to tell you eagles are like that. And you are supposed to be eagles, not like crows. Quack, 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 all over the place. Talk a lot, but no action. Man. Eagles, amen. So very high. Eagles' eyes see very clearly. Not crows looking only at rubbish. Hello? Is God speaking today? We haven't come to the donkey yet, it's just the eagles. Then God has this metaphor that is found in the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 25. He talks about ants. Ants are very tiny insects or animals. But you notice ants, uh, they walk always in a straight line. One. Have you seen ants? They don't walk over the place. One, no. They walk in a straight line. Very disciplined. And day and night, uh, they'll be walking one, all in a straight line. Very hard working. Is God telling something to us? Uh, about ants. They are very disciplined. They are very hard working. And they always prepare for trouble days or for winter days. They always bring food back into the nest for the queen. It doesn't matter how far they are, they will find food, they will still come back in one straight line. That's ends. And then God talks about Proverbs chapter 30, verse 27. He talks about locusts. Now, locusts you may not have seen, but I ask you, have you seen a grasshopper? You have seen a grasshopper, right? Grasshopper is actually a locust. But you've only seen one or two grasshoppers. But when you see a swarm, thousands and millions of grasshoppers, they become a swarm, they become a locust. They will wipe out everything. Every vegetable, every wheat, every cornfield, every rice field, they will wipe out in a matter of hours. That's how powerful a locust, a swarm of locusts is. And that's why God is trying to say, unity is strength. You work as a team. Many in churches are working in silos. My department, your department. My ministry, your ministry. Your ministry, you don't catch out my ministry. You don't disturb my ministry. You disturb my ministry, I'll give it to you. Like that, you just be a grasshopper, hopping only for the rest of your life. You need to be united. That is why God gives metaphors. And then, finally, God gave a story in the book of Numbers chapter 22. This is in the Old Testament. About a prophet of God by the name of Balaam. This prophet was a very powerful prophet that God uses. That whatever he says, whatever blessings he declares, God will declare that blessing. So one day, there was this king from Moab. His name was Balak. He wanted to use Balaam to curse the Israeli camp, the Jewish camp, because they were too powerful. And he sent his people, his messengers, to tell Balaam that uh, he will be given a lot of presents and money and gifts if he will do what the king wanted, to go over to the camp of Israel and declare a curse on them. For that, he will get a big reward. In the Bible, it says gifts. In Malaysia, it's called corruption. Hello? Don't be so innocent. Lah. I know you're all talking in the coffee shop every day. This fellow corrupted, that fellow corrupted, steal how much? Here, you come so innocent. It is corruption. Even prophets can be corrupted. Balaam asked God, at first he asked God, God said, don't do it. Then he told them, my God said, cannot do. So they went back to tell the king, the king came back with more gifts. Extend from 1 million to 10 million. 
Then he asked God again. God says, cannot do. Then he went to tell them. Then the king firstly came and told them, this is what I'll do for you. He said, okay, la, I can try. La. See, money corrupts. He sat on his donkey and he followed and went on his way to the Israeli camp. Along the way, God sent an angel with a flaming sword and stood in the path of the donkey that was carrying Balaam. And when the donkey saw the angel, of course the donkey got afraid, he couldn't pass through, so he turned to the left and went down to the side and then came up again. So when he went down to the side, Balaam was very angry because he went to the longkang and came up again. Wagged the donkey. Then continued again. Further down, the angel again appeared with a flaming sword and stood right in the path of the donkey. And when the donkey saw again, he went down the drain again and came up again. The second time. And again got whacking from Balaam. The third time, the angel stood in a very narrow passageway between two walls. So when he stood right in the middle, the donkey couldn't turn to the left, couldn't turn to the right, cannot even go and turn and reverse. So what did the donkey do? The donkey sat down. At least the donkey is smart. The donkey sat down. But Balaam wagged the donkey and wondering what was going on. Why is the donkey behaving this way? And kept hitting the donkey. And finally, the donkey got so fed up, the donkey spoke to him. He said, why are you hitting me? Ah? Then he answered the donkey. A man, a prophet answered the donkey. You don't find it strange? Ah? The prophet is talking to a donkey. And the donkey is talking to the prophet. Now I'm scratching my head. Who is the donkey now? And the donkey said, you didn't see uh, who is in front. Why are you wake me so many times? You see who is in front. Then finally God opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel there. So what is the moral of this story? The moral of this story is, when God tells you something, Nike says, just do it. What? Just do it. If Jesus says, only believe, only believe lah. Don't question, don't doubt. Don't be like Balaam. Questioning and doubting. Wag the donkey until the donkey had to talk to you. Right. So, finally, Balaam got the message. Okay? And God used a donkey and ass to speak to a prophet. So, I think Balaam was a bigger donkey than the donkey he was riding. God was sending a very strong message. Anytime, anytime you put something natural in the hands of Jesus, He will turn it supernaturally. Anytime. When you give Jesus two fishes and five loaves of bread, He will multiply it to feed 5,000 people. And that's not the end. The crumbs that is collected he will be able to fill 12 baskets. Anytime, ah, this is the part that I like, I think you all like to hear. Anytime you give Jesus six jars, big jars of water, water pots, containing 30, 20 to 30 gallons of water, anytime you give Jesus, and when Jesus has need of it, he will change the water in those six jars into wine. Wow, how you like that, huh? If you had that, huh? well, I see, I know, brother, enjoy your wine. Because your yes is very loud. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anytime you place your trust in the hands of God, something supernatural will happen. Today, I say this to you. Every time and any time you put your trust in Jesus, something supernatural will happen. Amen. So, what is this about this particular donkey that Jesus is riding now? Now we are coming back to this donkey. What's so special about this donkey? 
You know, this donkey was mentioned in the Bible as we just read. And it was quite a detailed uh, instruction and a story about the donkey. How the donkey was tied up. How the donkey was in that place, in that particular village. How they are supposed to acquire this donkey. And what is this donkey supposed to do? So God spent a lot of time describing what to do and what he wanted to do with this donkey. And God doesn't simply tell grandmother stories. Okay? There's always a purpose why God does things. He is very concise. He's very precise. He doesn't beat around the bush. He's straight to the point. So what is the reason why God had to say so much in detail about this particular donkey? I can think of four ways, four reasons why God did that. The first is, Jesus chose an ordinary animal. A donkey is a very ordinary animal. But you must remember, the theology of it and the prophecy of it was that Jesus was the Messiah. He was coming as the King of Israel. To the Jews, He was considered as the one that will save them. Save them from the Roman oppressors of that time. He was the King of the Jews. He was the King because they say, Hosanna to the Son of David. David was King David. They acknowledged that he was from the line of King David and therefore he is the king of Israel. And therefore he has come to save them and to liberate them from the oppression of the Roman government. That was their expectation. But now Jesus is not riding in on a horse because any time a king comes back from battle, when they, walk, they come into the city in triumph with all their army and soldiers, they never ride a donkey. They always ride a horse, a stallion. That shows grand. That shows authority. That, that will depict victory. That depicts power. So, why did Jesus ride a donkey in a triumphant entry into Jerusalem? Because he was already recognized and considered as the king of Israel. It's because Jesus wanted to tell all of them and to tell us, this is a different king. This is a king that is not here just to liberate them from the Roman oppressors. This is a king that will liberate them more than just to liberate them from the Roman oppressors. He is here to set the captives free from sin, from bondage, from oppression, from depression, from suppression. That is what Jesus was trying to say. And he used ordinary people like you and I. Not a horse, a grand horse, a stallion like it was ridden by a general. A donkey is an ordinary animal. Just an ordinary animal to tell us that, look, God is not looking at your position. God is not looking at your status. God is not looking at your wealth. God is not looking at your poverty. God is not looking at anything. But God is looking at you. And Jesus says, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. This is what Jesus is saying. He uses ordinary people. He called Peter and his brother Andrew while they were fishing. And he called them at the Sea of Galilee while they were fishing, say, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. This is what Jesus was doing. I pray today that you will know that God is no respecter of people. Doesn't matter who you are, your status, the type of car you drive, the house that you live, it doesn't matter. Whoever you are, God is interested in you. Amen. Not in your titles, not in your name, not in your positions, not in where you work. But God is interested in you today. Everyone that is here that will acknowledge Him as His Lord and Saviour and Master. This is the Jesus. This is the reason why Jesus used a donkey. This is the metaphor that God is speaking to us through a donkey 
to tell us that, look, hey, a donkey is an ordinary animal, just like all of us, ordinary people. And Jesus is saying today, look, I have come not just to put the country right, I have come not just to put the economy right, I've come not just to put the social condition right, I've not come not just to put the political situation right, I've come to do more than that. I've come to put the life of the people of Malaysia right in Jesus' name. That is Jesus. The second reason The donkey is a service animal. It's a beast of burden. It is used to carry heavy loads. It's not used for racing or running because it's not a horse. It is here to serve, to carry heavy loads, to carry heavy burdens. If you have been to the nation of Nepal, you will see that they use donkeys a lot. A trail, a train of donkeys. They will climb those narrow passages in the mountains, you know, by the side, the edge where there's rocks and all. Only the donkey can carry 60, 70, 80 kilos of weight on both sides, balance. And they can walk through those narrow, narrow passages on the mountainside and they will not fall because their hooves are very stable. Their legs are very short and strong. And they are very hardy animals. They can withstand adverse weather conditions. Donkeys are service animals. They serve. So, don't think you are a horse today. That you need to be put in a stable, be fed with the best hay, vitamins, supplements and everything. You are called to serve. Amen. Jesus came to set the record straight. He was the king he was the saviour, he was the messiah, but he rode on a donkey to tell us he is the servant of all. Amen. Because four or five days later, at the upper room where he did his communion with his disciples, he washed their feet to show humility. A king washing his subjects' feet to show that he is here to serve them. We are here in this church to serve God and not to be served. That's the story of this donkey. To be of service. We are here not to obtain favours. We are here to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Because how many of you are Christians? Can I see your hands? Wow, all of praise the Lord, hallelujah. Pastor, you are blessed. All of them will be serving God. <laughs> Not everybody is clapping, la. they don't agree. But God is saying, we have been called to serve. If you are a Christian, the day you accepted Jesus as your Lord, what do you say? I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord my saviour and my master. If Jesus is your Lord, who do you serve? You serve Jesus. Jesus saved you for what? So that he can be a blessing to you, you can serve him. Why? Because he's your master. You are the servant. And the Bible says, the greatest of all is the servant. So I pray that we get our theology right. We pray we get our Christianity right. Amen. And I know, and I know that I know that Pastor Philip Kwan will not preach this type of message here. Because next week there will be no one coming already. Or you will start sending him WhatsApp messages. I'm okay. I touch and go. I touch and go. Oh, it's alright. You can send me a WhatsApp message. It's alright. Because next week I won't be around. I will say praise the Lord. But I will say this. 
If I make an error in judgment of what I say, I apologize. But if the word of God says it, then I offer no apology. Is that fair? So an animal like a donkey is service. It's a beast of burden. It carries the load. The third reason why is a donkey? Because God said He saw that donkey was tied up and was alone. Jesus was not near where the donkey was. Jesus was in the opposite side, in another village. When in the other village, he told the two disciples, you go to the village opposite of this village. Opposite. And there you will find a colt. Now a colt is a donkey, but a colt is a donkey that's less than four years old. That's why it's called a colt. It's a donkey, but it's just less than four years old. And this colt has never been set on by anyone. And it was tied outside a house. No one knows why it was there. No one knows for what reason it was there. Even the owner just tied it there and left it there. And people were just walking by the, the coat. No one rode on it. No one touched the coat. No one untied the coat. It was there because it was reserved for Jesus Christ. Amen. God had reserved it for Jesus and that was the plan of God. When God wants to do something, He will prepare something for something to happen. Amen? Amen. So if God wants to do something for you, He will prepare something for God to do something for you. Amen? If God wants to plant a man that plays a saxophone in this church, God is also telling me something. Because it's not one time, it's three times now. We need to sit down, brother, for breakfast one of these days. This is happening too often to be a coincidence. It was tied and all alone. It was tied up. And Jesus saw that coat from afar. He couldn't see it physically, but he could see it through the eyes, the divine eyes of God. God is all-knowing. And you are seated here today, I want to say, God is all-knowing. I do not know what you are going through, but God is, knows what you are going through. There's a sister you are going through some terrible uh, 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 situations and challenges in your life, decisions that you need to make in your life. You, 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 you are at a loss of what to do. But I'm saying to you, God knows and God is speaking to you today. It's a sister. Okay? God is seeing you from afar. Amen? And He saw it way before. And He has already prepared the answer for you. That's the good news. He's already prepared the answer for you. All you need to do is trust Him. So these two disciples trusted Jesus at what He said. They believe Him. They believe Him first before they went. That's the reason why it's called faith. Faith is something you do not see but you believe. You need to believe first. Ayah, here got lamb lah, Pastor. I know lah, I got lamb. Pray lah, they got healed. Pray a bit, they say, oh, yo, still got lamb lah. Next week come, still got lamb lah. Because you keep seeing the lamb. I'm saying, pray that the lamb is gone. Believe by faith first. When you believe like that, then your faith will make you well. Amen? This is how faith works. But people like us, we like to see to believe. God says, believe first, then see. It's the other way around. No money lah, Pastor. Yeah lah, no money lah, correct lah. You press into the ATM, key in each time, zero. Key in another card, also zero. There was one time I was standing behind this man. He took out one card, press, press, press. Nothing came out. Change, put another card, press, press, press again. Nothing came out. By faith, God will show you a better way. I have experience. I put in a card. I already know no money inside. 
I already know already. Check already online. Check already. No money. But I still went to press because why? I failed to believe from the time I check on the phone to drive, put the card in, there will be money because my God is Jehovah Jireh, and I needed money. And guess what? There was money lah. Of course, there is money lah. Otherwise, why I waste my time? Go all the way, find parking lot, go to the ATM again. God never fails. God never fails. I want to encourage you. Today, Jesus sees you being tied up. You are under bondage. Like that donkey, tied up, cannot move. People walking by and nobody cares about the donkey. Not even the owner cares about the donkey. It could be in the hot sun standing there for hours. He could be better in a stable or in a house or in a, in a barn where he got hay to eat got carrots to eat. But no, he was there in the hot sun, no water to drink. He's waiting there. Are you like that? Are you like the donkey waiting for God to answer? Are you being tied up? Are you being in a state of depression? Are you being in a state of worries and anxiety? Are you being tied up by fear? I've got good news for you, church. I've got good news for you, brother. God is here. Jesus is in the house to set you free today. You will be untied from your bondage. You'll be untied from your circumstances. You'll be released from all your troubles. Amen. And the two disciples went. Just as Jesus had said, there was the donkey, the coat being tied there. And they believed first. They believed first and then they saw you get the picture? They didn't see. When Jesus told them, they didn't see. But they believed Jesus, what He said. And they obeyed and they went. So you obey. When you hear, you obey. And when you obey, then you will see. Because Jesus only said two words, only believe. What He says, only believe. Two words. And true enough, the cold was tight there. And they went near the coat and untied it. The moment they untied it, the owner came out of the house. You always like that one. The devil will come out and catch out one. When God wants to do something great, you know the enemy will come and disturb you. The enemy will come and discourage you. The enemy comes in many forms. They may come in a friend, in the form of a friend and tell you all kinds of grandmother stories. And then I'll make you more depressed. They think they are helping you, but actually they are making you more depressed. The devil will come in many ways to distract you. Take you off your focus. But Jesus had already said to these two disciples, if that owner asks you, Oi, what are you doing with my donkey? Now I'm paraphrasing, lah, Malaysian style. <laughs> sure what? You are the owner. You see two fellas tie, untying and that's your, your coat. You so say, Oi, what are you doing? Correct. Let's be real. Uh. My daughter taught me one thing, you know. He said, Dad, you want to preach the Bible uh, now uh, with the Gen Z, uh, especially it's then Gen Z. Uh. You cannot say like that one. You must say, uh, go out and touch some grass. Wow, I say, wow, nice phrase. Uh. What it means by go out and touch some grass? Get real. Get real. You boomers all like us, uh, we don't understand what they are talking, uh, all their terms. Now I'm trying to learn Gen Z term, you know. Uh, now I'm trying to tell you, go out and touch some grass. Get real. Because why people like us now are so caught up with our handphone, you know? Everything AI, TikTok, talk, tick, everywhere. Everything all virtual, all bluff one. Don't go out and touch some grass. Get real. This is the real thing. Not Coca-Cola. This is the Bible. That's why I say it's good to come uh, with the Bible. No? So you can get real. No? You can feel it. You know? And you can see the words. It's black and white. The handphone one, uh, sometimes not so real. No? Got AI. You know? Then got notification. No? Then got WhatsApp messages. No? You're blinking like a Christmas tree. You know? Here, blink, there, blink, there, blink. Uh. What, what Bible is that? There's no Bible. Uh. There's virtual. That's AI, artificial intelligence, artificial one. Get real. This is the real thing. 
Bring your Bible lah. Ah, this one also Pastor Philip won't, won't preach one. I'm doing you a great favor today. After this, he's going to buy me a big lunch. Hallelujah. No, no, that's corruption. Church, let's get real. Amen. We have been fooled. We have been distracted by this new technology called artificial intelligence. Now the latest one uh, is called, uh, I don't know whether you're not, Chat GPT. It seems to know everything about you. It seems to know everything you want to do, uh, wherever you want to go, it can uh, uh, design letters for you and all kinds. Chat GPT. It can even prepare sermons for you. But I tell you, uh, if you ask Chat GPT to prepare sermons for you, uh, I guarantee you are uh, boliawan. No result one, zero one, because it's not real. It's all a compilation of all the sermons and your, 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 your profile and everything and they come out with an algorithm and work out something that will suit you and suit the church you're going. But it is void of the Spirit of God. Silver and gold, I have none. But such as I have, in the name of Jesus, I give you rise up and walk. That is by the Spirit of God. That is not by chat GPT. So go out and touch some grass and get real. I'm learning, okay? I'm learning to communicate with the Gen Z. They need to hear this, especially online. Catch it. Because we are so influenced and so uh, 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 dependent on our handphones now for everything that uh, we have lost our communication with God. And God is bringing us back to a story of a donkey and trying to say, be like a donkey. Be like a donkey. That can speak to the prophet. Because why? God uses a donkey who is an ordinary animal who can serve. And God is setting free that donkey today. Hallelujah. The two disciples release the bonds that is tied. And now the owner says, Oi, what are you doing with my donkey? And they say, Jesus taught them. When, you see, Jesus went far ahead you know, to prepare the message for them. You know. He knows that the owner will come and say, Oi, what are you doing with my donkey? If Jesus said, if, they, if the owner asks you, you just tell them this. The Lord has need of it. Ha, that's it. No need to tell grandmother's story. Don't e -E -R -R there. Okay? Just say the Lord has need of it. And he will shut his mouth. Whoa, I tell you how powerful is it. When you use the word of God, uh, that is power. You use your own words, sure end up in a fight. Or you end up in jail. But when you use the word of God, uh, there is power. The devil's mouth is shut. Amen. Resist the enemy and he will flee from you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You just declare all this, the devil will flee from you. Just like the two disciples said, the Lord has need of it. When they said it, the owner shut his mouth. Didn't say anything. Didn't even make a claim on the donkey. Straight away, he allowed them to take the donkey, the coat away. Do you see the power in that? Just one line. Jesus taught them what to say. So I'm teaching you, say what Jesus say. You know what Jesus say? Ah? Jesus say a lot of things, no? You know what Jesus say? The whole Bible, go back and read. Everything Jesus say lah. Go and say anything lah that's inside here. Amen. Claim it. Claim your promise. The word of God. And when you say that, your faith will arise and the authority that comes with declaring the word. Because in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. And nothing was made that was made if not for Jesus. So now, the owner 
has not laid claim on the donkey because the owner realized ultimately Jesus is the creator of the donkey. Jesus is the rightful owner of the donkey. That's the power of the word of God. And I want to say to you today, you are sitting here in the presence of the Almighty God. You are seated here in the presence of the Holy Spirit. You are seated here just like in the days of Genesis when God says, let there be light. You are seated here because the Word of God is being preached. You are sitting here because the Word of God is being declared to you this morning. You are sitting here to, you, are, you have the faith to believe you will behold the miracles in your life. You will behold the breakthroughs in your life. You will behold the freedom and liberty in your life. You are seated here and you will know that the God that you serve is real. Just like the grass, if you go out and touch it, He's real. This is what the donkey represents. And they brought the donkey. Very calmly, the donkey followed. The donkey never kicked his head, never, never resisted. Quietly, obediently, the donkey followed the two disciples. You know why? The donkey was subject to the creator and the master. Amen. Even the donkey realized Jesus is calling the donkey. Jesus is calling the animal. The animal obediently followed. Unlike some of us, Jesus calls, <coughs> oh yeah, Pastor, today not free. Lah. I got this thing to do, or I cannot come. Tomorrow also cannot come. Tomorrow I'm going out station. Next week also not free. Uh, I won't go into details. Uh. I think you'll get the message. Uh. I won't say amen, I'll say ouch. When the donkey arrived at that next village where Jesus was, the donkey was ready for service. Amen? It was never set on before. The donkey never knew and realized what it feels like for someone to sit on it. This is the first time. Normally, uh, for animals, uh, if they are not familiar with you, uh, they will resist one. You go and try, you go and try and ride a horse and see if they does not know you, uh, he will kick and he will bug you, uh, he will throw you off. Uh. Same with the donkey. A donkey won't kick you off maybe, but it will never allow you to climb on top of it. And even if you force yourself to climb on top of the donkey, the flood won't, won't move. Not even an inch. That's why the English term says, stubborn as a mule, stubborn as a donkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stubborn, uh. don't move on. Uh. Won't move. So, what I'm saying is, God needs to touch our life, you know. If God don't touch our life, we won't move on. Very hard to move on. Because there's no change. There's no passion. There's no impact in our lives. The Holy Spirit must touch our life. We must experience the presence of God. Then we will serve God uh, with no reservation. One. It's not about the money. It's not about the favours. It's about the passion of serving our Master and Saviour. That's the donkey. Amen. It was ready for service. It was faithful. It was available, waiting there for Jesus. And it was teachable because why? The two disciples led the donkey and obediently the donkey followed. So the donkey was faithful, available and teachable. Remember this. F-A-T. Fat. Remember fat. Every time you are asked to serve God, Remember this. Number one, what? Faithful. Number two, available. Number three, teachable. Teachable means what? Submission. Don't ask 1,000 questions. Lah. Just do it. As to the Lord. Amen. Abounding in love, in joy, not mum, 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 grumble, but joy of the Lord because that will be your strength. Fat. That was what the donkey was. It was a service 
animal, it was an ordinary animal, it was tied up but released, and now it was ready for service. Oh, Pastor, hard message lah today. Everything about this donkey uh, relates to me. Uh, wow. Very hard to swallow. Lah. Very heavy. Now, I'm going to give you the medicine. How can I? Uh, the tiger balm, you know, to suit your heart. Make your heart cool a bit. Lah. I think it's hot now. Uh. Now, let your uh, blood pressure come down a bit. So you're not so angry. Now is the medicine. The medicine is, the good news is, this donkey uh, was a very privileged donkey. Ordinary animal, very privileged. You know. The moment uh, the donkey was led to Jesus, uh, the moment they saw Jesus, uh, everybody uh, took off their cloaks, uh, their coat, uh, their, their garment, their, their shawl, or whatever, they put on top of the donkey. You know. They didn't put on Jesus, you know. they put on the donkey. That represents the mantle. You know. the, the, the ones that they wear, their the most expensive piece of clothing, their the, 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 the coat and all, uh, they, the best, their best wear, they put on the donkey. That's the anointing that came upon the donkey. Hello, this is the good news. Amen. When you're ready for service, when you just do it as what God tells you to do, when you're wanting and serving God, this is what happens. The anointing comes upon you. Amen. Amen. All this while you're praying for the anointing, anointing, but never come. Zero. Why? Because you're not serving. Uh. What for? You put anything? Nothing to put what? Nobody put uh, on the donkey while it was tied up there in front of the owner's house. Only when the donkey was taken to Jesus because it was going to be an animal that Jesus would use to ride in triumph into Jerusalem. So the anointing must come. On the donkey. Why the anointing must come? Because why? The one that anoints the donkey is going to sit on the donkey. Hello? Do I hear amen? amen? When you serve God, Jesus comes into your boat. Amen. When you serve God, just like the donkey, He sits on top of you. Amen. The anointing is on you and the anointer is on you. Amen. amen. Why does it need that to happen? Because God wants to use you to carry the gospel and the glory of Jesus to use you to perform the miracles. Works through you. You see, Jesus said, we are partners. We are partners, 50-50. You do your 50, I do my 50. When you offer your services, when you offer to serve the kingdom of God, God says the anointing. When you offer to go to hospital to pray for somebody you don't even know, that's when the anointing comes. And God and Jesus, the Trinity will go with you. And they work through you. And then you see the miracle and soul will be saved. That's the whole idea. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. So, this is the anointing. This is the good news. Remember, I told you, now the tiger balm applied already. Huh? Ah, the anointing comes now. Not only that, huh? got some more. You want to hear some more? Oh, you want to hear some more? Huh? Good news you want to hear, lah. bad news one. Huh? After they put the mantle, the cloaks, cloaks and all on top of the donkey, and Jesus sat on the donkey, and then he started to ride the donkey towards Jerusalem. While he was riding the donkey to Jerusalem, they all put some more clothes. The Bible says more. They put down more on the road to pave the road like a red carpet. And then they put the palms, you know, the palm in Israel at that time. When they wave the palm, it signifies that they are waving to the king. And they say, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed be the one that comes in the name of the Lord. That means they recognized that Jesus was the king and they waved the palm and they also spread the palm together with their clothes. Now, I just wonder sometimes, uh, they put so much clothes, I don't know what they're wearing at the end. But anyway, it was lined up. Mount of Olives to Jerusalem. Do you know how far it is? If you have been to Israel, you will know. It's about seven miles. 
all along the way, line up, palm and clothes. But well, here's the good news. Jesus is sitting on top of the donkey, okay? On top. But all the clothes and all the palm were on the road. Whose feet was on those carpet? Oh, I say, praise God for wisdom. La. Hallelujah. Give yourself a pet at the bank. When you serve God, you are the one who will walk on the red carpet. Amen. Not Jesus. You are the one. This is your benefit. This is your reward. You get VIP treatment. Ah, like the... Yeah, like Agong, sister. Better than Agong. Ah. Because you got Jesus with you. King of kings and Lord of lords. And it's the donkey's feet that's walking seven miles on red carpet. How do you like that? Well, you're very poor response. Lah. Like you don't believe me. Lah. After this, go and touch some grass. I'm telling you the story that you just read, you know. Church, go back and read it. Huh? Luke chapter. I'm telling you the story, I'm paraphrasing it so that you can understand the significance of the donkey. The donkey is speaking to us today in this story. This is the story. So when you serve God, the anointing comes upon you and you will get preferential treatment. Never fails. I'm, I've experienced this many times. The latest was when we went to pray for a, a member of our church. This girl was uh, uh, stricken with uh, C-19. Was, uh, was it C-19? Uh, Michael's daughter. Or COVID. COVID. Uh. Yeah, I think it's COVID. She was in hospital for a week on drips. And uh, parent, oh, dengue, dengue, sorry, dengue. She was having fever. It was up and down, up and down, and the fever didn't go off. And she was there for about a week, Asunta. And it's a private hospital. And that Sunday, I was in SLA. Uh. Yes, SLA, here. And uh, we got this call and said, okay, we will go on our way back. We will stop by and pray. By the time we reached there, it was not visiting hours yet. Private, private hospital uh, got visiting hours. And she was under the CCU ward. You cannot simply walk in. It's not a general ward. She was under observation. They don't allow uh, any visitors to go in uh, outside of the visiting time. So when we reached there, it was only 3 p.m. or 3.30 p.m. And they only start at 5 p.m. So how are we going to wait so many hours? Anyway, I say we are here not to visit. We are here to do God's business. Amen. God's business. So we just walk to the floor and just walk straight in and the doors, uh, the doors are closed and they've got a pin number. You cannot, you cannot just walk in like that. Until the visiting hours, they were disabled. That. So during that time, when we were walking, the door just opened. Walk, 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 open again. Walk right in and went into CCU. And then she was lying on the bed. And we prayed for her. Spent about an hour there. The nurse saw. Then, this is the part. One family tried to come in. They managed to come in. But when they opened the last door, the nurse said, Who are you? He said, I want, We want to see another patient. He said, Can you not, not visiting hours? Then they looked at us, you know. Then I quickly pray again. Then they went out. When you are doing God's business, God will open the doors. Amen. I want to tell you this God will open the doors because that, that sister. The next day was discharged already. After that, after one week, the next day, discharged. Because we pray and we say, tomorrow uh, you'll be out already. You don't need to stay already. See, when you do God's business, the doors will automatically open. You believe? Uh? You believe or not? Ah, praise the Lord. You read the book of Acts. Even in prison, uh, Paul and Silas and all these are Peter. Doors were open. Gates also were open. 
chains will fall off. You believe? If you believe, then no need to go out and touch grass. Praise the Lord, yeah. You are okay here. So I want you to know, when you serve God, this is what God will do. The anointing breaks everything. The anointing breaks the chains. The anointing opens the doors that cannot be opened. The anointing breaks the bondage. Amen. It comes from Jesus. So I will conclude now, this morning, and tell you, Palm Sunday from today will be a different Palm Sunday for you. It won't be an ordinary Palm Sunday message. Amen. It is something that God will do in your life. It's not just waving the, the, the flag or waving the palm. No. It's about service. Serving God. It's about being available. It's about humility. It's about teachability. It's about obedience to the Lord, Saviour and Master of our lives, Jesus Christ. Amen. So it's Palm Sunday. Jesus is just telling a message to us. It's not how the world thinks. The world thinks about power, about status, about wealth. Jesus did not ride on a horse. He did not come in grandeur with trumpets and everything. He did not arrange to buy an expensive stallion to ride on. No, sir. Jesus came on a donkey because He came to serve. He came to love and He came to save. These are the three things. These are the three objectives. And Jesus said to each one of us, follow me. Follow me in what? To serve, to love and to Safe. This is the three things that you remember, you need to remember the significance of Palm Sunday. The message that God spoke to the donkey and is coming out from the donkey's mouth to you today. Amen. Let's stand. I want to request the brother who plays the saxophone we're going to play that song, Amazing Grace, brother. And we're just going to remember today. Uh, it was the amazing grace that encountered us. Uh, Jesus and His grace. That saved a wretch like us. And I just want you to close your eyes and reflect. Okay? How the grace of Jesus sought us out. He found us. We did not find Him. He called us. We did not call Him. He sent His disciples to summon the donkey, the coat. We, the coat didn't come by His own to look for Jesus. Amen? Jesus sent someone one day, many months or years ago, to come and share the gospel to us. And that's why we are here in this church. And this is the same thing that Jesus wants us to do, to share your gospel to somebody so that that person will one day come and sit down and know Jesus. Amen. That's the amazing grace of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, brother. Just close your eyes. If you know the lyrics, just sing it. Yes. Reverently, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Amazing Grace again. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I was was lost, but now I found was blind, but now I see was grace that taught my heart. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise your holy name, O Lord. Shada la varianda. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, we stand here, Jesus. As a testimony, Lord, of your faithfulness, O Lord, your saving knowledge, O Lord, of your providence, O Lord, and the peace that you have placed in our hearts, O Lord, peace that surpasses all understanding, O Lord, that continues to guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. God, we thank you for the word, O Lord. May our hearts be receptive to the word that you have spoken today, O Lord. That we will continue to be faithful, O Lord. To be available, O Lord. To be teachable, O Lord. In all things pertaining to the kingdom of God, O Lord. For you have called us with a high calling, O Lord. As ambassadors, O Lord. Because, Lord, we are a chosen generation, Lord. A royal priesthood, O Lord. A holy nation, O Lord. That, Lord, you have called us out of your out of darkness into your marvelous light, O Lord. 
And today we stand as a testimony, O oh Lord, that the God that we serve is a powerful, awesome and living God, Jesus. That you are still doing miracles in our age and our time. That you are real, O oh Lord, and you are the same yesterday, today and forever. So Lord, we stand today, O oh Lord, and say, O oh Lord, that as you have released that donkey, that colt, O oh Lord, you will release each one of us because you have promised in Luke chapter 4, verse 11, the Spirit of the Lord is upon us, O oh Lord. You have anointed us to preach the gospel. You have anointed us to set the captives free. You have anointed us to bind the brokenhearted. You have anointed us to heal the sick and the lame. You have anointed us, O oh Lord, to pray that the, the blind may see, O oh Lord. And we declare today, today, Palm Sunday, is the day, O oh Lord, at the favorable year of the Lord, Father. It begins with today, Father. A day, Lord, that you walked into Jerusalem, you marched into Jerusalem as the Messiah, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords, in triumph, O oh Lord, in victory, O oh Lord. So, God, we thank you, Jesus, that we are healed in the name of Jesus. We are set free in the name of Jesus. We are delivered in the name of Jesus. We cast out all fear, O Lord. We cast out all anxiety, O Lord. We cast out every doubt, O Lord. We believe, O Lord. We believe, O Lord, that the promises of God are yea and amen. We believe, O Lord. We stand on your promises by faith, O Lord. Because faith pleases you. We give you the praise, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. And everybody says, Amen, Amen. Let's give the Lord a lovely clap offering. Hallelujah. Amen, Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, already 12 o'clock, uh, but the altar is still open for you to come forward. Those who need any... Uh,